started on the show in 1971, and you know, they show us a clip from a 1984 showed up on YouTube the other day, and my kids looked at it and they went, Mother, what were you thinking? Look at your hair. It's only hair. It's only hair. It has looked great. Okay, we are here. Do you see how many devoted fans you got? Thank you all for coming out. This is really lovely. Just lovely. They come all over the world. They want to hear what you have to say. You've got some great stuff to say. I have no. <laughs> well, you know what, first of all, we want to congratulate you because it's the 40th anniversary of What Lives Live. Isn't that extraordinary? You've been talking to us on the air for 40, for 40, years. 40 years. And still going strong. And still going strong, and not only that. Your character, Vicki, has endured so many things. I mean, you inspire so much loyalty from all of your fans. What is it about Vicki that inspires this from people? Um, I think it's because Vicki has been through probably every single thing any human being can be, go through. And she's still there. She survived. And she survived with good humor and intelligence and kind of a sense of righteousness and morality. And, okay, she's a little crazy on the side. But, you know, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, really. I think that's what it is, that she gets through everything and endures it and comes out the better at the other end, the better person. You absolutely do. You so inspire. Vicki has gone through so much stuff. You have been yeah. everything from a newspaper publisher to a waitress yeah. or a devoted mother. Yeah. Can you tell me, out of everything that you've had to play, what is your favorite character? My waitress. <laughs> That story in Paris, Texas. Um, and I have to tell you, I, funny, I, I was going off on vacation, and every year I take at least a month in the summer. And I said to our executive producer, I said, they're sending me off, I'm at the airport, and I say, you know, give me a ticket, the first plane out of here. And when I left, that was where we ended the scene. And she said, well, and she didn't say anything. She just said, okay. And that was the end of it. And I said to Frank, where am I going? It just out of curiosity, he said, oh, you're going to Paris. I went, Oh, that's kind of uninteresting. And he said, well, you'll have a good time. And I come back, and I went to him, I said, you wretch, you didn't tell me it was Paris, Texas. He <laughs> <laughs> just said Paris. So I got back to this unbelievably wonderful story. I mean, wouldn't we all, at some point in our lives, like to vanish for a couple of months, get away from all the problems, all the other all your relatives, everybody. Just clear your brain and go and do something that is so anonymous and so simple and easy. And she loved into it, literally. She didn't intend to go and be a waitress, but it sort of fell into her lap and she said, yes, I would like to do this. I would like to live anonymously for a while. And she loved it. She just loved it. And I think one of the reasons she loved it so much was the people, Gigi, Noel, and Mo, yeah. who were real people. They are not wealthy, they don't live in the land, you. They don't they're real people who work hard for a living, and the actors themselves are so fabulous. And Gigi, thank God, has come to land you, and yeah. Noelle and are coming too! Yeah. 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 I can't wait. They are just fabulous. Now, out of all your moments, Erica, do you have a favorite Vicky moment? Oh, wow. <laughs> there have been so many. You know, when I see old flashbacks, all I can think of is, wow, we've told a lot of stories. A lot of stories. Oh and I guess, no, I don't have a favorite Vicky moment. I've loved so many of them. So many of them. You know, the many husbands I've had, and the adventures, and the altars, and, and all of it. And I guess some of the favorite moments are the scenes I have with Robin. <laughs> Excuse me. Robin makes me cough. Uh, no, the scenes that I have with, with Dorian, which are always so good and such fun. Yeah, maybe some water. Maybe some water. Miss Erica, because you got some stuff. We, we want to hear what you have to say. Here, it's a always bottle of water. This choking air. Anyway. Thank you. Well, yes. I'm going to get you a you water. Okay. You, know, you know, it's just been so many great moments that you have had over this 40-year period. I'm sure everybody, all of your fans, thank you so much. Thank you. Can you pop that up for me? Thank you. Okay, here we go. Very, very, very welcome. Now, we each have our own. Okay, so everybody has their own. 
their own memory of uh, their own you know, favorite Vicky moment over the 40 years. We've loved you in Landview and just every every dream you've stepped out of and way too sick moment. Here we go. But you know what? It's so funny. The, the, the memories that everybody has of Victoria, Lord, Gordon, Burke, Riley, Buchanan, Carpenter, Davidson. You have been. You, men have loved you. Men have And have I had a nice mental love yes. That's a nice thing. You had nice I've mental. never had a real creep. Which is really nice, really nice, you know. You just you 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 have that certain spark in you that men they just they love you they love that's very sweet thing inside of you. Thank you. But you, know, but you know what, Sherry? What? They're paid to love me. <laughs> <laughs> and we just love you because you're real. Ask, ask my husband if they love me. <laughs> you know what? We got some fans of yours, Erica, who would really like to share some of their favorite Erica Slezak moments with you. Yeah, so we've got some surprises for you. So we're gonna go to our first celebrity fan guest. Take a look. Okay. Watch me drop everything. Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a good time. I hope you're having a good time too, and I'd like to take this public opportunity to thank you for being so warm and welcoming to me on my first day of the show. I'll never forget walking down the hall, and you came walking down from the other, the other end, and you stopped and took both my hands in your hands and looked me in the eye and said, Jerry, get out of the way. <laughs> curtsied on my way past him. I love him. He's so nice. He's so nice. No, I actually, on the, when he, the day he auditioned, um, I went and threw my arms around him and said, God, I hope this works, because he's, he came with such a reputation, and I started getting emails from people in all the daytime shows in New York saying, oh my God, you're so lucky to get Jerry Verdorn on your show. And so ever since then, I say to him, oh my God, everybody loves Jerry. <laughs> But everybody does love Jerry. And so working with, and he played Clint. So did you have fun working with Jerry? What were your experiences working with him? Jerry, um, and, and you won't know this from seeing him play Clint, is one of the funniest people you've ever met. He and Michael Storm, uh, who played Larry for many, many years, have a sense of silliness and clownishness about them that nobody sees on camera. And it's just charming to be with them. It just totally charming, yeah. and Jerry's like that. You know, Erica, you've seen so many characters come and go yeah. on One Life to Live. Is there any favorites that stick out in your mind? Do you know one of the, no, not really, but one of the remarkable things about being there, and the show's been on the air 40 years, I've been on 37 and a half, Woo! is the enormous number of actors who have been gone, been gone and yes. come and gone, can't talk, come and gone through the show. Okay. Uh, some of them stay a couple of days, some of them stay a couple of weeks or months. And you have the privilege of working with some really great actors, very very famous people, people who were famous or became famous afterwards. And you have lovely memories with all of them, really, you know? It, it was, uh, it's kind of amazing when I think of all the people I've worked with, all the stories we've told. Yeah, wonderful people, terrific. Now, when actors come on your show, is there any advice that you give them? No, you don't I keep my mouth shut. I keep my mouth shut. No, uh, I learned long ago, unwanted advice is, is just a poison. And people resent it. So I don't think advice from you would be unwanted. I don't say a word unless somebody comes to me and says, could you help me, could you tell me, would you ask, you know. Uh, and if they do, I tell them, you know, uh, <laughs> what Lee Patterson, who played Joe Riley, told me on uh, one of my first days working with him. He said, you walk in that front door of the building, you check your problems at the door. You go in, you do your job, and you pick up your problems on the way out. And it was very smart advice, because you don't visit your real life on your co-stars, on your actors. You have a whole different life there. It's uh, a job, it's a wonderful job, there are delightful, friendly people there, but to suddenly involve everybody in everybody's life, you can't keep track of it all, because everybody's got a you know, series of whatever's going on. So it was very good advice for me, and I have tried to uh, uh, listen to that advice. And I am, thank God, friendly with every single person on the show. I have always been, because I mind my own business. On the other hand, if you mind your own business, 
business, you never hear the dirt. <laughs> and that's the problem. Because every day I come home and my husband greets me at the door saying, Okay, what'd you hear? What'd you hear? What's the gossip? And I say, I, I didn't hear anything today. Because I don't listen. I kind of run in my dressing room, I learn my lines, if I have time off, I read a book or whatever. I don't, um, I don't go out and, and, and sort of <laughs> gossip. Uh, I only get my gossip from the work of the park. <laughs> that's really great advice. You're saying it's, sometimes it's just not about us. You know, it's, it's never about, about us. Okay. It's about the characters, and it's a job, and it's a very sure. good job. And you have to Don't pull it together. Bed. You have to be professional. You have to respect your fellow actors at all times, yes. off screen and on screen, and respect what they are doing and how difficult it is to do what they are doing at times. And you have to be very supportive of each other because this is not a one damn show. That show does not work with one person. There's always a lot of folks going on. You know, the only person who ever got to work alone was when Roger Howard played Todd and nobody was talking to him, so they had to bring in a parrot so that he could talk to somebody. And the parrot made more money than the actors. Can you not? You know, because of the support and respect that you have for your fellow actors, do they treat you like the mayor of Atlanta? Oh, they do. Yeah. yeah, they do. I think people are kind of in awe and afraid of me. And I go home and I think, who would anybody ever be afraid of me? I mean, I'm just so wimpy and simple and stupid. But people are very kind. I don't know anybody is thinking that at all. Well, I think I think it. You know, people treat me that way because I've been there so long and I know where a lot of bodies are buried. <laughs> Well, you know what? Yes. We have another surprise guest for you, and uh, they have something to say. Let's take a look. Hey, everyone! Oh, I hope you're having a great Super Soap Weekend. And Erica, this is for you. Since day one I started on this show, you've taken me under your wing, always supported me, and it's a true honor to play your daughter on One Life to Live. Now, everybody, have a great time at Super Soap Weekend! Okay, let me say one thing about Melissa Archer. She is one of the best actresses that I have ever worked with. She's also one of the goofiest, most delightful human beings I've ever met. She's a doll. She's an absolute doll. Oh, okay. Well, you know. <laughs> so, you know, like, when, when you first met Melissa, what did you think of? Because she's very bubbly and... Melissa is one of these people who... <laughs> that's why I love her so much. She is totally from outer space. <laughs> You'll be sitting there minding your own business and she'll come over and say something to you that has nothing whatsoever to do with anything you're talking about or doing. It's just from outer space. She'll come over and say, I saw Goofy on the street the other day. You know, she just does things that, but that's her, her, her brain works that way, her mind. She just goes from, from sort of subject to subject and assumes that people are going to follow her. <laughs> she is so talented and so nice. And I love her dearly, and I'm delighted that she's my daughter, because I have always been convinced with the red hair that she's Nikki Smith's daughter. She has to be. <laughs> All right, now, Erin Torpy, who oh. just practically grew up in front of our eyes, yeah. and she's like Jessica, uh, she returned for the 40th anniversary show. Yes. So can you tell us about Vicky's most recent trip to heaven? Yes, for the 40th anniversary, I got to go to heaven again. And Frank told me, our producer told me about this, and he said, you're going to meet various people along the way, people from the past. And I went, okay, like, who? And it was Asa. And then he said, you're going to meet Megan, my daughter, who had died. And Jessica Tuck was supposed to come. So she couldn't. There were all these conflicts, and she couldn't do it. And then Frank called, and he said, we're going to bring Erin back, who I... I mean, my baby girl, Erin, I've known her forever. And I said, well, what's she going to play? Jessica's not dead. And she said, no, she's going to play baby Megan, kind of grown up. And I said, well, that would be interesting, because do you remember when Megan died, we gave away her eyes? I said, Megan has no eyes. And when Frank took him like a half second, he went, she got him back. In heaven, we get everything back. So it was wonderful. Wonderful to have Erin back. I've always been in love with that girl. She's she's like my third child. You know, I have so many children. It's nice. Well, you know what? Your your children, your co-stars, they are such big fans. I don't know if they're as big of fans as we are of you. But you know what? We're, we're gonna go to the audience because yeah. the fans have some questions for you. But before we even go to them, uh, I hear that you have a special announcement oh, yeah. that you want to tell me. Okay, this is cool. This is really cool. 
there is somebody coming back to One Life to Live who is one of my very favorite people, David Vickers. But folks, David Vickers comes back having found peace and inner life. And he comes back dressed like a Buddhist monk. He does his namastes all over the place. And he has given up all worldly goods. He wants nothing to do with money or wealth or fame or fancy houses. And then he's about to discover that he is the real Buchanan. but it will be a lot of fun to watch. See, now this is why you have to come to Super So Weekend. Well, there's another little trick in there. Okay, Asa has left a second will that within a year of his passing, if his, you know, progeny, whatever, have not, is it raining? Oh God, I'm sorry. If his progeny have not successfully turned the company around and made a go of it, they lose everything. The house, the company, the money, the ranch, everything. And it all goes to David Vickers. <laughs> to his wow. unacknowledged son. Well, the Ace's lawyer is running around looking for David Vickers, who happens to be in Landview dressed in a, as a Buddhist monk. And everyone in town who knows about this, except Vicky who doesn't know, is trying to keep David away from the lawyer so that the lawyer can't tell him. And it gets to be very, very funny. Because the last thing we want is David to know that he's like the richest human being on earth. Okay, that is the greatest scoop. So you guys, gotta, we gotta keep this secret. You can't tell anybody. No, 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 no. This is a big, big secret. This is a big secret. Okay, so now you've made that big announcement, which was okay. really big. We're gonna go to the audience and take some questions. Hi, Erica. Hello, where are you? Down here, I'm Mary. We all love you. Everyone give her a big hand. I'll tell you what, Kelly from Homestead wants to know. Okay. Would, would Vicki have a favorite husband? Oh, that's a really hard question. You know, she falls in love so deeply, and then they die. <laughs> or, you know, they, whatever. Um, I used to say that it was Joe Riley, but yeah. she would have stayed with Joe forever. And I still think that if he were alive, she would still be with him. But after that, and as wonderful as Clint is, and Sloan, and all, I think Ben... Yeah. 